Good morning. Good morning. July 7th. Wolf Cops, Arizona, TA Truck Stop. Hallelujah. Oh, we're going to read some word today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We praise you. We, uh, we praise you because we can know you because of your word. And we're thankful for the word. And we honor your word. And we trust your word. And we value your word, Heavenly Father God. So we're going to get into this. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, starting here in 2 Corinthians 12, about 18. We're going to just skim over what they call Paul's pedigree. Because what we're going to get into is loving the church eventually, but he has to lay down, you know, Pastor Sarah say, I had to read all this to say this. So that's what we're going to do again here. Uh, 18, he says, uh, others boast about their human achievements. Don't we know a lot of people like that? He, and he skipped down now to like 22. I'm reading from a different Bible here. It says, I have served, I have served him far more. I have worked harder, been put in prison more often, been whipped times without number, and faced death again and again. Five different times the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods, that was by the Romans. Once I was stoned, three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea. I have traveled on many long journeys. I have faced dangers and rivers and from robbers and I have faced dangers from my own people, the Jews, as well as from the Gentiles. I have faced dangers in the cities and in the deserts and on the seas. I have faced dangers from men who claim to be believers, but are not. Mm, talked about that earlier. I have worked hard and long, and during many sleepless nights, I have been hungry and thirsty and have often gone without food. I shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep me warm. <clears throat> um, then, besides all this, I have the daily burden of my concern for all the churches. Wow. <laughs> and, and all that, he just didn't give up about what was important. And that's others. Right? Uh, he says further down there in 33, I have been lowered, remember that part where in Acts, he's, I've been lowered down in a basket through the window in a city to escape. <laughs> remember that story? So uh, he go, he's going through all his pedigree because he's writing a letter to a known church. The second letter, this is 2 Corinthians, and uh, there are a bunch of knuckleheads and he's about to get into, I'm about to come see you, right? But there is a, a question about him being an apostle. So when you get into uh, chapter 12, everybody knows about Paul's thorn in the flesh, and they get stuck there. And I had noticed in my big study Bible, I had no notes past the thorn in the flesh taken on anything else he said. Because people always get stuck there, and they, they'll preach that, and they'll get all, you know, poor me about the thorn in the flesh, and God made me sick, and he told me no, and none of that stuff was in there. And they twisted the, twisted the, just the, the high heaven. So we're not even going to skip over it, except for where he says in verse, chapter 12, verse 8, three different times I begged the Lord to take away. Each time he said, my grace is, my grace is sufficient. My power works best in weakness. <coughs> I said, this is a New Living Translation? Yeah. It reads a little different for all you King James Yahoo's out there. It's okay. And I like it because it, this kind of breaks it down a little better. So he's trying to establish his apostleship because some, he, he even endured from supposed believers. So he had people around the church or whatever saying, "Are you just like Jesus was grace like, are you sure God said that? <laughs> you know? So we go into 2 Corinthians 12, 14. Was there a heading there? See? Yeah, talking about the love for the church. It doesn't say it in here. It just say it in my study Bible. It's Paul's concern for the churches. Yeah, that's what it says. But uh, for me, I was praying about about having, like I said before, more integrity about loving the church. And uh, and then the, the Lord pointed out, well, you got no notes right here where I tell you how to love the church. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. 
So again, you know, the word of God is where we need to be, right? <coughs> uh, he goes into 14. He says, now I am coming to you for the third time, right? Uh, he's talking about not being a burden to him because some people were complaining that he was stealing money from the churches and giving to other churches. And you go back and read all that craziness, man. It's, it's a, nothing's new under the sun. We, we see all kinds of backbiting inside the body of Christ today. And it's, it's weird. We question everything. We wonder why. Why y'all doing this? And I, I, uh, They may have read the word like I read the word. But right here in this part, I didn't have no notes on the word. Right, so so uh, that's why we have to give grace and be more concerned about the churches. That's what Paul was in all his stuff. He was more concerned about the churches. He's not coming to them because they're a bunch of boneheads that need a need a whooping. We're going to get in this because in twelve verse nineteen it says, "Perhaps you think we're saying these things just to defend ourselves." No, we tell you this as Christ's servants. And with God as our witness, everything we do, dear friends, is to strengthen you. So you got to say all that, you know what I'm saying, to get to that point. Like, I'm, you, I, I know where I've been, I know where you've been, but let's today, let's step, let's take a different step. Like I say, some guy earlier told me, I'm going to go up on the W mountain and get closer to God. You're missing it. <laughs> And we get to get into the Word to get closer to God. We get yeah. come together to one another to be closer to God. Does it say it differently there? What was that, 19? Uh, verse 19? Well, it says, yeah, but we do all things well for your edification. So, But just edification to, to strengthen us, right? <laughs> so he's doing all this. So in the beginning of chapter 13, he says, uh, he tells him in verse 1, this is the third time I'm coming to you. Um, uh, verse 3, I will give you all the proof you want that Christ speaks through me. Okay, so, so he's, he's, had to, he's had to bring all this stuff. That's why he's doing this. That's why we, we don't need to get stuck just there in 12 about the thorn of the flesh. The whole story, once again, everybody writes himself into the story of just chapter 12, thorn of the flesh. And he don't even realize what the whole story is about. He's correcting the church. He's not whining and moaning that the Satan sent a buffeter, you know, or God made him sick or God told him no. Man, people messed that up big time. So he's trying to get to is I'm trying to strengthen you. I'm coming to you a third time. So he jumped down to verse 4 of chapter 13. Although he, being Jesus, was crucified in weakness. Is that what it says there? Mm -hmm. Although, yeah, he, capital H. He was crucified in weakness. It might say it different in this one. Uh, he now lives by the power of God. Yeah, yeah, he lives by the power of God, right? We too are weak, just as Christ was. And that's only and he's only talking about his flesh. He's not saying that somehow Jesus was weak. <laughs> All right? He's saying that he died in his weakness. Well, he died in his his earth suit. Uh, the, the only thing weak about Jesus was his earth suit. Yeah. <laughs> like the rest of us, right? So, but we're supposed to be like Jesus. He says, we we too are weak, or we have flesh. The song we're just singing, the guy says, we're, we're free, we're free, we're free, we're free, we're free, we're free, and now we're singing the freedom, right? What he pointed out in the beginning, he goes, but I still struggle every day. And I'm not a perfect Christian. I'm like, well, which one is it? Because I don't struggle every day. I have concerns coming up against me, and I have to live by faith, no matter what the concerns are. Yeah, that's so, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, careful what you say there, because that, I thought that song was a little contradictory to me. Yeah, I'm walking free, you know. I'm not free from attack, but when attack comes, like we read before in Romans, we are free from sin. Sin is also sickness. Sin is also a deception. We were talking about deception earlier, huh, Michael? How people were just so deceived. Like, how you get to talking to them, you're like, what book are you not reading? Or have you read it at all? Or, yeah. But there, it's just a, we're in a freedom spirit. They're in a deceptive spirit. Paul even said that some of these believers were persecuting me. What were they being deceived by? 
He's now writing to a church. There's something that they're deceived by. And he's not, he's not coming just to condemn them, but he wants to point out that garbage that needs to be removed. I'm going to get into it. He says here, we too are weak just as Christ was, but when we deal, but when we deal with you, we will be alive with him and we'll have God's power. <laughs> so don't don't despise chastisement if someone's trying to grow us up, not blow us up, right? Well, we're going to do it in God's power. Praise God. Yep. He goes on. So he says, examine yourself. Paul's like, Paul's like, I'm about to write down a list, and you better make, check the boxes. He said, you need to examine yourself again. Now, you have to realize he's writing to a church, right? And we're reading what he wrote. So at that time, they were acting out of sorts, however you want to put it, in sin or whatever you want to put it. And he had a right to them, examine yourself to see if you are in the faith. Or see, well, I don't know how it reads there. Michael uh, 13, 5. Examine yourself to see if your faith was genuine. Yeah, there you go. Was that, see, that one says to see if you are in the faith. So what we're learning, like in healing school and everything, and uh, different classes and stuff for provision, do you believe it or not? Because yeah. if you're in the faith, if you are sure that your faith is genuine, and, and uh, arrested me in this, Mike. I just put my bike back together and I took it for a hard test drive and it was leaking oil. I was like, oh, should I take it to Tucson? Yes, I rode it, I rode it to Tucson, but I was like, should I? Do? And the Lord's like, because I was struggling about putting it back together, and the Lord reminded me, you know, have faith, have confidence in your physical abilities. Because remember, way back here, he said some men boast in their physical abilities. So, but you can do it. The Lord spoke right to me to about my flesh to, to put it back together. <clears throat> and now I got it back together and I wrote it real hard. It was leaking. Right? Uh, well, the Lord said, have faith in what you're doing. And even if it does leak a little bit, put your hand, lay hands on it. <laughs> right? That's, that's being in the faith of going to the elders and lay hands on you and let the and let the spirit of their faith, right? right? So, so that's why I had to operate in the faith <clears throat> of, of touching it some more. And, we, and that's why we go to classes and keep going to church is we need our faith fed. We need to touch it more, right? Exactly. It's not that you got a one and done faith and everything's perfect and all well. We're learning that, right? Well, as I'm riding to Tucson yesterday, I, uh, I know that this little side panel can get oil shine on it. And I know down here near the foot peg can get oil shine on it. So as I'm riding down the road, I keep checking And I'm checking. And the Lord arrested me and goes, hey, do you have, are you in the faith or not? <laughs> yeah. Just quit checking. Right. <laughs> and just ride the thing. Ride the thing yeah. My grace is sufficient, he told Paul. Are you over yourself? Yeah. <laughs> quit checking. Quit looking. Go and help the rest of the church. Go and be blessed. Go and do the things I've commanded you to do. Quit. I, I had to quit looking down, Mike, even in the physical. Do you believe it? Yeah. So well, later on, it started leaking a little more, but I, but he arrested me. He goes, quit checking. Are you well? Are you healed? Quit yeah. looking. Quit going. So we, we, I heard, we heard something the other day that was really good, and I wrote it down. I'm going to bring it back. Uh, <clears throat> but in this, what I'm getting out of this and all this, because at the very end, in verse 10, he says, I'm writing to you this before I come, hoping that I won't need to deal severely with you when I do come. For I want you to use the authority the Lord has given me to strengthen you, not to tear you down. So he goes through his whole pedigree and stuff and the stuff happening, and he hears the Lord, Boy, just get out of yourself, man. It doesn't matter what Satan's trying to do to you. You go to church to go take care of and people to write and to love on. Yeah. My grace is sufficient, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> right? Not, not what I've heard people preach. Well, the Lord said no three times. It doesn't say no anywhere in there. Yeah, it, right? He's just <laughs> saying, look, we have to get stop boasting in your fleshly stuff. Because what you're about to receive is revelation stuff. 
<laughs> right? Yep. So, in reading all that, we see Paul, and, and we could say his pedigree, and the many reoccurring beatings and distresses that in, in, in the physical. But there in chapter 12, we see the spiritual. It, it his thorn in the flesh is a spiritual is a spiritual attack sent by a messenger of Satan, right? But also now in the spiritual, the Lord Jesus tells him, my grace is sufficient. The words are in red right there. So Paul's hearing from Jesus, right? <clears throat> Revelation. Uh, he understands, in, in, in my, in my, uh, in my uh, New King James, in chapter 12, verse 10, because it says it different when I was reading this, it says, therefore I take pleasure in my infirmities and in reproaches and needs and persecutions and distresses for Christ's strength. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Mm -hmm. It just says it different in this NLT version. He, 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 real, <clears throat> he realizes in the spirit, even though he's weak from the beatings and the shipwrecks and the snake bites and everything else, right? The same God, Jesus, he, he got beat and stoned and thorned and whacked with sticks and, and, and punched and he snatched knots out of his beard, to, right? He, he's like, so he, I mean, Paul might even watch some of that going on because he was a Pharisee. We just don't really hear about him until Acts, but you better believe he was probably there listening to all that stuff go on in the court the night that they judged Jesus and stuff. And he's recurring what he saw and now all he he's kind of boasted in everything that he's done and now he's like, look, you know, I, I am receiving in my spirit the grace to continue on. It doesn't matter what my flesh looks like. Quit looking at it. Quit looking down. Right? Yep. Now he goes into uh, like you said, he wants to uplift the church. He's, he's really more concerned about the church. It reads it different in the New King James Version. But he's like, I'm not here to take from you what you think I'm here to take from you because they were talking about money and stuff. But I, I'm only concerned for you. It says it. So he wants to uplift the church, but now he has to, now he has to just call them out because he has to point, point out all the stuff they're into uh, it says, because I skipped over it, but he's talking about 12, 21, at least when I come again, my God will humble me among you, and I shall mourn for many who have sinned before and have not repented of the uncleanness, the fornications, the lewdness, which they have practiced. So he, he points it out. You know, he's not letting it slide. <laughs> But this is like the third, the third time he says, I gotta come to this church in two letters. <clears throat> and uh, you know, there was no chapter and verse back then, so he's just writing it straight out. So uh, he's talking also in 13.5, is that it reads different uh, in what I read out of the NLT. It says, examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith, right? Test yourselves, do not, do you not know yourselves? We were talking about that earlier. Some people were just deceived. That Jesus is in you. Unless you do, unless indeed you are disqualified. And I was like, hmm, what is disqualified? Retro base. Huh? Retro base. Retro base. Retro. Read it. Examine yourselves. Whether you be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know you are not of yourselves. How can Jesus Christ in you accept be you? Reproachful, reproachful. Okay. Well, the, the word disqualified ran me through the bunny trail, and it took me to a, uh, it took me to Jeremiah first. They started talking about silver being uh, refined, and then it took me into uh, Isaiah uh, one twenty two, where he talks about uh, uh, again. talking about uh, refining like fire. He says, your silver 
has become dross and your wine mixed with water. And what that's pointing out is uh, instead of being a city, Jerusalem, where the people were drawn to God, Jerusalem had become a seductress to evil and idolatry. And so now he's writing a letter, because remember, remember that uh, Paul was Saul, he knew the Old Testament, so he probably knew Isaiah, right? He's saying, look, you Corinthians, what you're doing, if you were to be refined right now, <laughs> you're, you're, you're in, you've mixed too much of your, uh, you, you, you've mixed too much of worldliness. And whenever that fire starts refining the silver, all the silver is in, so in impure it can't be used at all. It's, it's disqualified. It's no longer good silver. That's what that points back to. So Paul's like, examine yourself. Are you sure what you're doing looks like what you're doing? What you should be doing? What we should be doing? So he talks about the silver thing. Israel did not pass the test. And we are asked here from our leaders to examine ourselves. Because I am not the Holy Spirit Jr. Right? And he wrote this letter, but he never got to go visit them. You know, he didn't get to the end of where he wanted to go. He was, uh, he was beheaded before that. Uh, Paul was. But, he's, but we're reading it as a church. Yeah. And you have to remember that he had to go through all this stuff to point out, I'm not here to, to beat you down, but to lift you up. But you are going to have to walk the talk. And, and quit talking the way the world does. Uh, we are asked here from our leadership to examine ourselves. Can our life and our walk and our talk take refining? Because <laughs> what happens, we are kind of talking about this earlier, Michael, you know, is uh, the light came in the world, but they, they love their darkness more than light. Because as soon as stuff started happening, there was like a refining or a buffeter of Satan showed up. And they're like, oh, you know, uh, no, it, it can't be that way. <laughs> you know, it can't, it can't be because the word of God said do it like this. You know, well, you're not being truly genuine in faith, right? But like me, I didn't have any notes on that. Maybe I missed that part that I needed for my faith. So again, that means I need to exam I, I was somewhere asking God for love for the church, and he pointed out to me I had no notes on love the church. You dummy. <laughs> so at any time we can get into the word and get in a fellowship, right, with one another, right, and, and get, you know, to where if we're in the refining process, you guys can help put more holiness into me and take out the worldliness. <laughs> that way my faith will be genuine. Praise God. Another reason why we, we need to hang out together. I don't need to go to church. No, trust me. <laughs> y'all, we all need to get to hanging out together. Hmm? Yeah. So where do I make that? Uh, and Amen. yeah, and, and is there more holiness in us or more worldliness? And we always have an opportunity to uh, change that. Now in Matthew, and Matt Mara's telling you guys that uh, the Lord told me a while back, uh, you're my disciple, read Matthew. While I was doing this and reading all that this morning, and he took me right back to Matthew. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Because that's what I'm supposed to Matthew 25. All right? You know, we always talk about the, the ten virgins. Uh, that story is kind of well known. And uh, as we get there, it starts in, a, starts in a chapter, verse 1. Yeah. He's talking about the wedding, but before the wedding, and there's a movie that a movie a documentary that goes along with this of why they use the Caniprium or Capernaum wedding. There's all different kinds of weddings in the day that he could, like a Roman wedding or you know what I'm saying, all these but he used a the city of Capernaum. He used the image of how they did weddings. It's pretty that's pretty cool. So uh he says, uh, this is the parable of the wise, no, yeah, the wise and foolish virgins. The king of the heavens shall be likened to ten virgins who looked, who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. 
Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in the vessels and with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a crying was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming, go out and meet him. And all the virgins who rose trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, least there should be not enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Surely I say, I do not know you. Is your faith genuine? Do you believe it or not? If you do, then you'll be working the things you should be working and not complaining every time someone brings up a chapter or verse to you with the hopes of correction because Paul is correcting a whole church for the third time. <laughs> right? That means that we might need our knuckleheads screwed back on, our headset screwed back on straight. Because I don't want to, and, and do it the first time. Not lackadaisically, because here the lamp and the oil are, the, the lamp is the vessel, which is us, and the Holy Spirit, which is in us, is the oil. And if we're not in the Word, and faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God, and, and, and we, in our studying, we, we understand that faith cometh by hearing, hearing an anointed Word, and hearing from the Word of God is by an anointed speaker. Praise God. Right? And then we all need that. And then we need to be genuine in our faith whenever we who are anointed, I had I had enough faith in me to know how to work on a more or I had enough mental faith in myself how to work on a motorcycle. But physically can I do it? I had to change the way I was thinking of myself. Right? And but the Holy Spirit spoke to me in order to do that. I had to get over my flesh and my concerns and everything. And that's what we want to do here. We want to be genuine in our faith that also whenever I operate the word, <laughs> right? I was operating in mechanical skills, but now how am I operating in, the, in my spiritual or Christian skills, however you want to put it. And if your faith isn't genuine, whenever, whenever those things pop up in our lives, we will know what to do. Well, your faith is in genuine because you didn't know what to do it to begin with because you're still running on. You're, you're still looking down trying to make sure it says just, hey, you know, God said you are well. God said you are healed. God said you are blessed. Do you believe these things? God said you're anointed. Do you believe these things? Are you in the faith? Examine yourself. Well, I don't know. Well, you just examined yourself. All right? But now examine yourself against the Word of God. And what does He say about you? And then you will know. <laughs> then you won't have to say, I don't know anymore. Praise God, man. So, uh, oh, it all represents the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Verse 12, when He says, uh, I do not know you, was that 12? Yeah. Uh, he says, I don't know you, verse 12. But let us. Stand in the faith, uh, not uh, standing in what we what we have done or boasted in our flesh. Because Paul talked about that, and a lot of people boast about what they have done. And what I heard the other day in a, a I don't know, it was healing school or what? No, it was a faith school. When you receive rebuke or revelation or whatever it was, it was in the spirit. And again, and I wrote down in the spirit of freedom. I almost didn't write it down twice, and the Lord said, no, right in spirit of freedom this morning. When we get here, we're singing about freedom, freedom, freedom. <laughs> right? But what I received in the spirit of freedom, something that I needed to hear the other day, and it fed my faith. Right? But I wasn't in class that day. I wasn't going to hear it. And whenever something came around, I'd probably still be stumbled in my faith. 
So I received in the spirit and not in the flesh. And when you receive in the spirit, don't go back to the flesh hoping to get more revelation because you didn't get revelation there to begin with. I got revelation that my skills are well to put the bike together. And then when I kept looking for the little leaks and little problems, little symptoms that were popping up, the Lord's like, do you have faith or not? And I had to quit looking down. We need to quit looking down at our flesh, right? Because that's not what he's telling us to do. And then we will indeed be in the faith. Uh, Paul received, but my grace is sufficient in the spirit, right? And he just, okay, well, let's get back to work. <laughs> It didn't matter what Satan buffeted him with at that point, right? It was done. My, I put up my shield of faith, so, and Paul wrote about the shield of faith, so he picked up his shield of faith and was like, no, I am well. doesn't matter what Satan's trying to buffet me with or all this other garbage or what people are saying about me. I need to go to a church and make sure that these people are well because he was concerned about them and letting them understand he needed to receive in the spirit. So that's why we say, y'all, we get to be in his word. And I might not have full integrity on certain, certain parts of the word, and you might not have a better understanding or better integrity in certain parts of the word, but you might have more integrity than me in certain parts, and I might have more integrity. And that way we fit in, sharpen each other's iron. Yep. That's, what I, that's what that looks like. But we have to be in the faith that even, and, and value even what God said to begin with. Why not? I ain't going to church. We don't value God. Right. If you value God, you value his word. And then you would see here that amongst everything that Paul wanted to do, he valued other believers. He didn't value their boneheadedness. He wanted to give out of their boneheadedness. <laughs> right? He wanted them to get out of stumbling. That song, the guy's like, I stumble, 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 but then I'm free, free, free. Well, no, but God wants you out of stumbling. You, you're not going to get out of being attacked right? Praise God, because if we're doing right, Jesus said, you know, you're gonna. Woo! So, in Romans 10, 17, we all, we all know that, uh, uh, I think I, I heard that, oh, I should have marked everything this morning, but you know what? It's a good day. I may not do this perfectly, but God, he told me what to say. <laughs> he told me to say his word. Uh, 10, 17, now, while Peter, was it 17 or 7? I didn't set all up. What happened? What am I? Faith, no, is it faith cometh by hearing in 10? Yeah, it's 17. Is it? 10, 7, Romans 10, 17. Romans 10, 17. My bad. Uh, I'm in Acts. It's on the screen behind you. That's well, sure. So faith You're comes doing good. by hearing. Yeah, so the faith comes by hearing. What? Plural. More than once. I heard I read that once. I heard the preacher, but I don't need to hear that again. No, faith comes by hearing, and you're hearing by the word of God. So what I was gonna get into is like trimming the oil and trimming the uh, uh, in the in the lamps, uh it, it that's a that's an action. Action verb. Yeah. Right? We, so we have to trim our oil lamps with the Holy Spirit, and we only get truth. And confirmation to the Holy Spirit by confirming it with the Word. Because we can hear all kinds of stuff pop into our heads, but if it doesn't confirm with the Word, you don't want to put it in your oil lamp. Well, you're right. Well, we're the oil lamp. We have to put the Word and the Holy Spirit mingled together well. Yes. <laughs> Not just say, I've heard that, or I don't need to go to church, or you know, all that stuff that we hear from people. Right? We, need, we need all of it to come in together. Because it's by hearing. We need daily trimmed oil. We have our time, like our own personal time. We have our church time. You know, uh, like you, uh, corporate church, you'd say Sunday and Wednesday, right? And then we have, uh, uh, then we have discipleship time. And I think that's our Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays and like whenever we get together for breakfast or whatever and then go watch a video you know, like we did today, I wasn't there with your brothers, but I watched it and praise God for that, you know, because we need that 
Uh, all of that oil, we eat all of that, we eat all of that in our oil lamp. That whenever we go, that way when we hear the shouting that the bridegroom has come, we will for sure know, whoo, I just got the Jesus pumps, man. <laughs> right? When we hear that he has come, we will have full holy oil, right? Anointing inside of us, word and Holy Spirit, and it'll be lit. And whoo, <laughs> we will know for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Time to bust off to the house with the husband, man. <laughs> yeah. Praise God, man. It'll be good. We'll know. And, and that's what Satan wants to do, right? Jesus said that as soon as the uh, seed is spread, that the birds come quickly and steal it. Satan just wants to steal the word from you. Just kind of simple. Just really. Are you sure he said that? Well, yeah, brother. I was trimming my oil with my brothers in Christ and my sisters in Christ the other day. And I was trimming my oil the other day in, in the teaching videos that we watched. And I was trimming my oil the other day. <laughs> are you sure God said that I am sure brother I'm sure you right here in the word we were trimming the oil the other day right I can tell you are you sure no well have you read that remember Jesus even told the Pharisees don't you remember it was written <laughs> they're just stealing the word they, were, they had the word twisted or the word was twisted evil right they had the word twisted they had their they had their their manifestation of walking and what they thought was anointing and, and, and good, it was all twisted. And Jesus was like, here, no. Even Jesus, you can hear Paul kind of saying, because Jesus first came to the church of Israel. He came to the Israelites first. Paul's now going to the Gentiles. But you can hear the same concern. Let's, let's get over ourselves. Let's get back to God. Don't you remember what it, how it's written? Are you sure? That's what God said, because God's speaking to you, and I'm pretty sure I know what I'm saying. <laughs> Can you just see in Jesus' head? I'm pretty sure I know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> I am the word of God now. You know, right, right? But he didn't bust your chops. He didn't hurt your feelings, but he had to be direct with them. Like Matthew 23, the whole chapter is just uh, Jesus laying it down, right? He's laying it down to the, to, the, <clears throat> to the Pharisees and giving it to them. And you have to remember, too, that the sect of the, I won't look this up, if you want to look it up, the Pharisees and the Sadducees had different beliefs in what they read. And I think, excuse me, I think the Sadducees were the ones that didn't read everything, like the history. All they read was the first five books, the Pentateuch. Right. So, when Jesus said, don't you remember it was written where David and them walked through the fields and plucked the grains of the, the wheat? Well, those guys don't read that stuff. But the Pharisees do. Right? So some had an excuse. But it did not excuse. <laughs> right? Because it was there for their learning. They chose to have put on man-like commandments of what they should and should not read. And that's called religion. So the Sadducees put on man-like religion. And so we're only going to read this. But whenever Jesus, the word, showed up with the word and spoke about David, they're like, well, he never read that because y'all don't read it. How, how big-headed you got to be not to think you don't need to read the word of God and then proclaim to be leaders of the church. That's, that's some ego right there, y'all. <laughs> right? So be... So today, even if we have struggle, we can be we can have strength in our weakness because we can turn to the Word of God and trim our oil lamps, and we can have power. We can live in His power, like we just read, and we walk in newness. We not we might be attacked by wanting us to be stumbled, but I am new, right? And if I do stumble, I can go because I, I am in the faith. And go to other faithful people and say, hey, help me walk this out. What am I missing? Right? Because I'm, now I'm choosing to examine myself. And if I don't have it in the Word of God, we're not seeing it. Or I never took notes in it like that one section. Maybe my brothers or sisters have. And we can discuss it. Then I can trim my oil lamp. Praise God. Man. So today, you know, like, in your newness, be well. Because he talks about it. Many of you be healed. Be born again. Right? 
Be willing. Be humble. Be available. You know, he loves us, and this is his idea. And really, I, I've said that a lot, and I've heard it a lot. But the other day, uh, the, the Monday video, I think it was, or the Wednesday video, Keith Moore just started right out, and it hit me like a sledgehammer. God wants you to be well. Yeah. And I've said that. I know I said that, but it was like, bam, quit looking down. Quit hoping to find, quit, quit receiving in the spirit and hoping to find more in the flesh. The flesh can't fill you because we'll never fill you up because whenever it's time to be refined or whatever, that stuff's going to be burned off. Only trim your oil with the, 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 the things of Jesus and the things he wants us to do and then that's when we understand where a lot of people are like, well, I can't be a preacher. Well, if you're, if you're examining yourself and in the faith, right, you'll find that you will be, your life will walk, will, will match up with your walk and your talk. And that in itself will preach. But if your life is all self-condemning and I ain't good enough, you know, I mean, I mean, there must be something wrong with me because I've been shipwrecked three or four times. I've been beat with rods four times. There, God must not love me. God loved me, then that stuff would happen. So therefore, I'm not good enough to preach because there's something wrong with me. That's not what the Word of God says at all. That's some man-made stuff. And you know what? That was stuff that you didn't have to hear because you're a man and you can make up stuff too. You didn't have to hear from some big, those big TV preachers are all messed up. Or this, you know, you're the one saying that garbage at the moment. I don't need to go to church. That guy on TV didn't tell you that. He was preaching church from the TV. You made that stuff up yourself. You stumbled yourself. You're, you're not genuinely seeking if you're in the faith by looking at the word and how you are living compared to what the word says. Right? <laughs> yep. God is good. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we can come to your word, Heavenly Father, that we can receive the anointing that we are well and quit looking. We can receive the anointing through the Holy Spirit that we are blessed and, and the things of the flesh our wallets, our bank accounts, or, 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 or which vehicle we drive. It doesn't matter. We're, we're, those things are, we live by faith, not by sight. We are blessed, Heavenly Father God. We are anointed to spread your word, Heavenly Father God, not because we have a, a great pedigree like Paul had and did all kinds of mess, but because, like you said, we can too walk in the power of God. We, all of us, can have the opportunity to to. Be a blessing to to uh, uplift people when we think that we're not good enough. God wants you to be well so we can be good. So not, not just good in, in moral character, but well good and spiritually good, and then follow God. And then the things of, of your of the things that you value, we will value, and then people will see that how our walk is matching up with their talk, and something will ignite in them because we are the light in the world like you say and our light so shineth Heavenly Father God that they will desire to know what's going on in us and we can say hey let me show you where I trim my, light, my lamp at <coughs> and then we can show them that it's through the word of God first in our relationship with you through repenting and being born again Heavenly Father God we thank you again for this time we pray us in your son's name who is Jesus the Christ amen